Hello, this video is about how to install a Linux Mint 17.1 Rebecca Cinnamon desktop into VirtualBox. The outcomes for this video would be to download Linux Mint 17.1 Rebecca Cinnamon, create a virtual guest for 64-bit Linux Mint 17.1 Rebecca Cinnamon, install Linux Mint 17.1, and then finally update Linux Mint 17.1. Requirements would be an internet connection, VirtualBox installed on your host computer, an x86 virtual processor 32-bit for 32-bit Mint, and 64-bit for 64-bit Mint. 512 gigabyte of RAM is a minimum, but Mint recommends 1 gigabyte. I would go with 2 gigabyte if possible. That's 2048 megabytes. 9 gigabyte disk space. I would definitely go with more than that. I recommend at least 20 gigabytes, and so does Mint. 1024 by 768 graphics is recommended. And then, of course, you're going to need enough memory to run both your host computer and your Linux Mint guest. So you've got additional info. I've got the download page, the home page. Uh, I've got a place where you can find a release announcement. And then you've got the Linux Mint documentation user guide in English. You can go to the download page and actually find a user guide for different languages. Disclaimer. While this video demonstrates an actual install of Linux Mint 17.1 Rebecca Cinnamon into a virtual machine, I can't fully verify this will work with all combinations of hardware and software. So if you wish, you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. Here I am at the LinuxMint.com homepage, and I'm going to download a Cinnamon desktop. But you can see there's a number of different desktops, Cinnamon, Mate, KDE, and XFCE whichever one you wish to download. You can click on one of these and it'll give you some more information about each edition. But I'm going to download, so to download a desktop, I'm going to go up here to the downloads and here's the download links. And if I scroll down here, you'll see that I've got Mate KDE. I'm going to pick this cinnamon right here, 64-bit. It says no codecs and that's basically a version without multimedia support. But I'm going to pick cinnamon 64-bit click on here. I need to find a mirror that's close to where I am, which is the United States, Ohio. And I'm going to go down here and see if I can find one. And in my case, I'm going to pick James Madison University. It says Linux Mint 17.1 Cinnamon 64-bit ISO. I'm going to click Save the File. Click OK. You're going to have to choose where you save the file because you're going to have to keep track of where this is. In my case, I'm using F Downloads Linux Mint Cinnamon Desktop Cinnamon Desktop folder. And there's the file name and just click Save. Now if I look up here, it says about 12 minutes. What I'm going to do is uh, come back when this is fully downloaded. Now that the download is complete and I know where Linux Mint 64-bit edition has been downloaded, my next step would be to create a virtual machine to install Linux Mint on. Here I have Oracle Virtual Box Manager opening up and this is a Linux Mint group that I've created that has nothing but Linux Mint virtual machines on it and I'm going to create a new virtual machine inside that group. If you don't have a group you can just create your own virtual machine without having to go into a group. Simply click on new. In this case I'm going to give it a name that tells me kind of what it's about and this is a base mint Rebecca Cinnamon and it's 64 bit and it's going to be the first one I've created on this and the operating system type is Linux and it's going to be Ubuntu 64-bit because Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu that's the best option if you look at all of all of these and I'm going to click on next and the minimum size is 512 recommended is 1024 or 1 gigabyte if I had the extra memory if I were you I would go to 2048 or 2 gigabytes click next and I'm going to add a uh, hard drive here create a virtual hard drive now create and we'll accept all defaults here now here's a fixed size and dynamically allocated 
dynamically allocated means it only takes as much physical hard drive on your host computer as you have files, whereas fixed size, whether you have actual files on your virtual machine or not, it creates a size for your virtual machine of that size. I'm going to put dynamically allocated. It uses less host hard drive space. Fixed size is a little quicker. Click Next. And I'm going to go recommended 20 gigabyte. If you recall, the minimum recommended I think was around 9 gigabytes for Mint. You're going to be installing some more stuff, so make sure you have at least 20 gigabytes. Then I'm going to click Create. So once I've got that part done, I'm going to go to the storage. And I'm going to go to controller ID empty. And then I'm going to go here and select choose a virtual CD DVD disk file. Now you notice I already have it here, but this will, and then go to where it's located. In my case, it's Volume F Downloads, Linux Mint, Cinnamon, and you may have to scroll around to till you get to it. I'm going to click right here. The reason I don't have to scroll around is because I've done this two or three times first before I actually go and create the video because what you're seeing is the actual install. Click Open. Now, I would not click on the live CD DVD if I'm creating a virtual machine in Linux Mint. I, I tried it that way and it seemed to screw up a little bit. So I'm going to click OK here. For the display, I'm going to give it as much video memory as possible and I'm going to enable the 3D acceleration. Click OK. And for system, here I can reallocate more memory if I need to. Processor, I'm going to pick one CPU. You can pick two CPUs if you got them. Basically, this is how much is dedicated to this virtual machine. And I'm going to enable PAE and X. You can do this or not do this if you have a 64-bit download. But for 32-bit download, you should always click on enable PAE and X. And some processors don't have this. It may be grayed out. Under acceleration, these should always be checked. If these are grayed out, you probably will not be able to install a 64-bit virtual machine because there's a situation with your motherboard or virtualization that VirtualBox will not be able to handle. But anyway, these are clear here, so I know they're both checked. Click OK. So now I'm ready to start my virtual machine. Once my basement RC6401 virtual machine was created, I can just simply right click on it and click start. And it's going to take uh, several minutes to get this thing actually going and I'm just going to show you probably every screen but not spend a lot of time in each screen. Once this screen has come up, let's expand it. And once I'm here, right click on in this little CD here that says install or DVD. Right click and click on open. Ask for your language. In my case, it's English. And then click on continue. And it gives you a uh, set of recommendations, or actually minimum, right here. And make sure you're connected to the internet, because this will allow you to download things such as Flash, unless you don't want Flash. Click Continue, and you've got a number of choices. I'm going to pick the simplest choice here, Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint. And you can set up your own logical volume manager, or set up your hard drive however you want. I'm just going to take the default, click Install Now. And if you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disk. And they'll be written to the disk of my virtual machine, not my host drive. Then the virtual machine writes it to the host drive, of course. Ask where you are. Basically, this is for time. Click Continue. 
As for keyboard layout, in my case I pick English US and English US and click continue. And as for your name, in my case my name is Mike and my computer's name, and this is all lower letters, I'm going to pick the same one, basement RC Rebecca Cinnamon 6401. Pick a username, Mike, and then a password. Now you notice it says weak password. That's because I have several hundred virtual machines and I pick a password that's easy to type. But I still require my password to log in. You should pick a stronger password if you're only creating one or two and you're actually going to play around with it. Most of my virtual machines are for demonstration purposes and any virtual machines I create to work with have a strong password. Continue. And this is going to take, let me say, about half an hour or so. If you want to see some of the features of Linux Mint while you're installing, simply click on this arrow and it, some of the features, Mozilla Firefox, Java Flash, and multimedia content. And you'll notice right here that you've got Java installed in Linux Mint. This is different from Ubuntu where Java is not installed automatically. And you've got CDs, music and CDs. Got the Banshee music player. Now don't worry about this window being so small because the regular window is going to be larger. And you can uh, watch DVDs with Linux Mint. You got VLC, Totem, and Video Codecs. I recommend VLC because I also use Windows computers and you can use VLC on both Windows and Linux computers so that creates less of a cognitive load for me which means I'm too dumb to learn two different sets of directions. G-Thumb to manage your photos. And if you don't like G-Thumb, there are other photo managers. You can get about 40 or 70,000 different pieces of software to put on Linux Mint if you want. I'll show you that later. And here you've got some mail and chat software. And then you've got LibreOffice. And I'm not sure exactly about this Microsoft Office support. You also have PDF support, basically some software there to create or read PDF files. And it says browse through 30,000 free applications from the software manager. I have a feeling this is a little bit out of date here. They didn't update this because I think there are more than 30,000 free applications in the software manager. It says Skype right here. As I was looking through the release notes, there were some problems with Skype. There are some workarounds, so let's go on. Install Wine and run Windows software. Wine is a uh, Windows emulator that you can install on Linux Mint. Basically what Wine does, it allows Windows software to run on a Linux system. Not all Windows software will work with Wine, but a lot of it will. And of course you can play around in customizing your desktop. I took a look at some of the desktop graphics and they seem to do a little more concerned about appearance than Ubuntu. And keep your system up to date, update manager. And I'm going to show you the update manager after this install is complete. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what this one means and when you get up to 4 and 5. And then there's some documentation that you can find on the internet. It looks like there's documentation inside Linux Mint also. That's the slideshow. So I'm going to kind of let the install go on and I'll come back and come to a new screen. Now after about 15 or 20 minutes you'll get a message that says installation has finished. You can continue testing Linux Mint now but until you restart the computer any changes you make or documents you save will not be preserved so I'm going to click restart now. And we'll go down for a restart. Now sometimes on a virtual machine it hangs up on the restart. In this case I get this screen right here which is not really a problem. Looks like it is, but it's really not a problem. All you have to do is go up to your machine, put in close, and then power off the machine. And you will have installed Linux Mint.
Here I am in the VM Virtual Box Manager and I have Linux Mint installed on Base Mint RC6401. Before I do anything, what I'm going to do is go over to Storage, verify that my ID Secondary Master is on Host Drive D and not on the actual ISO file. Click OK and then right click Start and it's going to take about a minute or two to start. Notice I've got some choices here, recovery, and the memory test. I'm going to hit enter or I can just let it go. should automatically pick the first one or default. So here's my login screen after about a minute and a half. Enter the name and then the password. So after about two minutes, here I go. And you've got a welcome screen. You can go through all of these and take a look. I'm going to just click on the software manager. It asks for your password. Just simply see how many pieces of software are actually available. Like I said, that uh, 30,000, it said 72,240 packages are currently available. So that's a little more than the 30,000 on the install. Close this for now. And also going to close the welcome screen. What I want to do is update and get the latest updates for Linux Mint. And I'm going to go to the menu. And then up here, I'm going to type in Update Manager. And that comes up right here. I'm going to click on that. It says Mint Update. And one thing I want to point out here before I go through the updates, I can go to Edit, and there's Preferences, and it's got these levels, 1, 2, 3, Safe Updates, not tested, but believed to be safe. It's safe. Unsafe Updates, and basically these are based on Ubuntu Updates, and 5 Dangerous Updates. And you can pick however you want to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change something right here. I'm going to always select and trust security updates because I want to have all these security updates. If I have a security update that crashes my machine, I'd rather have the security update crash the machine than something coming into my virtual machine and crashing it. So I'm going to click Apply. And here we've got the Upgrade, and this is checked. So I'm going to click Install Updates, and it's going to go through and install the updates a part of that update manager package. Click OK. Again, ask for your password. And you should run update manager every few days just simply to get all your updates or once a month or something like that. However important this machine is to you. I don't think there's a setting in update manager where you can do this automatically, but you can set up a Chrome job in Linux to do this automatically, and, but that's not part of this video. So I'm going to take a look at these updates, and you notice that there's some four or five, four and five updates, but these are security updates with their little red thing, so they're going to be installed. If, they, if I wouldn't have checked that install security updates, these would not be installed. So I'm just going to click Install Updates. It's going to go through here and actually pull down all these updates and then go ahead and install them. Some of these uh, additional changes that aren't listed here. Click OK. Again, Authentication. And so again, it's going to take, uh, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes to download and install these updates and I'll come back when they're fully installed. After downloading the software packages it's going to take a while to install the software also and again it says this can take some time. Come back when this is complete. Now if you saw that flash by real quick it said the update was complete. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. 
So I have a brand new Linux Mint Rebecca Cinnamon Desktop Virtual Machine installed. Thank you.